What happens when you get into debt? Get out now. Come back. Please don't tell can't force me. You calm down. And you can't. I haven't got any money. Or won't pay it back. Get off on my property. In this series, we meet the people who are losing their homes. Hello, would you like to open the door? Got 24 hours. Find somewhere else to go. Their cars. Can you pay this yes or not? I have to go with me now. I'm not going to take your cars off. And their possessions. I can't afford to pay the rent, but £700 telly. We meet the people who are owed money. He's got taken advantage of, big time. And the people whose job it is to collect it. I don't want to touch that. Don't panic. Because when you can't pay, they'll take it away. I will start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up for transportation. You pay me, and then I'll stop. One in five people in the UK consider themselves to have serious financial issues. And according to one leading debt recovery agency, there's been a 25% increase in visits to more affluent households in just the last four years. Paul Bowhill is a High Court enforcement agent. Hello, sir. We have a High Court warrant here. He travels across the south of England chasing debts Hello. and debtors. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be giving her a penny. If you fall behind on your payments... We're actually going into removal mode. ..he can seize your possessions and evict you from your home. Everything's got to be cleared out by morning. And for Paul, business is booming. The opportunity to fall into debt is far easier today than it ever was. So instead of buying an old rattletrap car, you go out and take finance and buy a new car, but it drives them into acquiring things which ultimately leave them in debt. Ashford in Kent. And today, Paul is with trainee Phil Short. They're on a mission that could become explosive. They're about to visit the home of a celebrity, an ex-professional footballer with a real hard man reputation. I mean, he has been all over the TV recently. Yeah. He's on a cookery programme, isn't he? Cookery programme? Oh, well. But the defendant's now almost £3,000 in debt to his local dog kennels. You know, it seems an odd debt, 3000 odd quid to a little trader. It's just pure arrogance or forgetfulness. Yeah. We've met celebrity debtors on a number of occasions, and they either react by being offensive and talking down to us, which is a trigger for me, or they're straight away up front, explain that there's a problem, talk it round and make a payment proposal. Armed with a high court writ, the team need immediate payment, or they can seize possessions to cover the debt. This includes valuable items that the defendant owns with his second wife, a former glamour model. That was her in that little fiat, I reckon, the blondie one. Could have been. The yes. <laughs> gotcha. Squeaked out with that. This is... What's, what is this for? If you let me get close enough, I'll explain it to yeah, you. Yeah, I think you should. Get these... Get, can you go away, please? They're on, they're on public property. Who are you? No, public can't. property. This is my... Right, get in. I've got a little go at it. How dare you? No, that's OK. Get in. The, get in. Are you going to talk about this? Is it? Who's it for? It is, yeah. Well, he's not here. No. Does this car belong to him? That car? You're having a laugh. Does it belong to him? Get out of my property. With no sign of the defendant, and his wife reluctant to help, Paul turns his attention to their removable assets. We'll just see if we can isolate who the car belongs to. Is this how they are? Hello, can you do an HPI check for me, please? It's a Fiat 500. What's this slaggy wife, is it? This is what his ex-wife has paid you all to do? Idiot. It's, sorry, it's not to do with his ex-wife. Well, what's it to do with 
Yeah. Well, if you if you'll give me house. okay, if you'll give me time, I'll explain it to you. Get off on my property. If you can, you do a land register. Get off of my property. It's all brilliant, really, isn't it? Couldn't get better. It's just, it's just a simple fact that it's, it's not a lot of money. It's, all it would take is a simple conversation to go, right, what's happening? How can this be resolved? And she's just into throwing a hissy fit, which I suppose is what wags do, isn't it? Standard wag, really. Look what you're doing to my little girl. Get off my property. What? Hey, what am I meant to do? Finally, the defendant arrives. If I can talk to you. <laughs> Sorry? Can I, can I... I'll say the children. <laughs> How you tell the children? You're done, the children's run away, you proud? Get off of my property! I own this property! Why do you have an otter tab? You look like you're about to. It couldn't get better, really, could it? I will always tend to stand still and to allow the aggression and the attack to continue so long as it's not physical. If I raise my voice or start to argue with them... No, no. Do you know who I am, yeah? I immediately lose control of the situation. Do you know who I am? This is for the... What's this for, fine? It's, um... I think it's a dog food bill. A dog bill? Can I just suggest that we drive down the road yeah, so you don't make a fuss with the neighbours? You know, just how he calmed down? Yeah. Yeah. What you've got to allow, always in these circumstances, you've got to give people the latitude <clears throat> to make a dignified retreat. Right, there's the writ, which I'll leave with you. Yeah. I do own the money, but it was just a, there was a question about um, the amount. That's all yeah. it was. So. There's no warning with us coming. No, it's not a problem. I, 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 I admit. But the, the How much can you pay and when can you pay it is the, is the question. If you can come back to me Monday and yeah. say, come on. I'll pay a grand off that Monday. It's not fun. If that changes, can you ring me? I won't change this one. Um. Did she truck all road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. She's a bit fiery, isn't she? Having promised to pay a thousand pounds in a few days' time, and the balance in regular instalments, Paul takes the defendant at his word. Uh, big dramas. So I put my dogs in, in kennels a long time ago. And uh, there was an argument about the amount it was to pay. And I've been in Brazil with the World Cup for the last six oh, weeks, yeah. so I've come home to all this. So, but I'm in the wrong yet again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. Paul's satisfied for now. But if the defendant can't pay or won't pay there could be dire consequences. It would obviously affect his situation if we were to make him bankrupt. I'm sure it won't go that far. According to figures from the Bank of England, household debt has almost doubled in the last decade and it's estimated that around 4 million debt collection visits are made every year. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and trainee Ian Taylor work across the north of England, and today they're in West Yorkshire. Keithley. Keithley, yes. Look at that. Stunning views. See, you won't get this done, Seth. 28-year-old Stuart has been in the business for 10 years. But former construction worker Ian is new to the industry. So what's this one then, mate? On the Ritz, we have £1,014.84. Lovely. The original debt is for unpaid equipment hire. But with court costs and the added charge for the team's visit, the defendant now owes over two and a half thousand pounds. Reached your destination on your left. 
the team need immediate payment, or they will seize goods to the same value. Oh, he's got a post in front of his garage door. There's something valuable in there. Let's go and have a look. When you get a new case, you're there trying to collect as much information as possible. You're looking at the address, what, what assets do they have outside, what type of house is it, who is it that you're going to meet. That's the exciting thing about the job, you just don't know what you're going into. I don't think that... No. Hello? Hello there. Not in at the moment, he's at work. Right, are you able to ring him? Uh, We're high court enforcement. Bear with me a second, because I'm just the friend that's here. Right, OK. Uh, Even though there's just a friend at home, the team still have the authority to enter if there's an open door. What do you want me to say? Uh, high court enforcement. Do you know this is even his house? Whose is it? His girlfriend's. Right. But he does live here. On and off, as far as I'm aware. I don't know much. Right, OK. Can you just stand outside, all right? It's like, we'll, we'll, we'll just wait here. Well, yeah, but this is my house, so I'm right. not allowed you in, so... Right, easy, easy. Just shut the door while I go and make a phone call. But you can make a phone call, it's no problem, but we'll wait here. <clears throat> Somebody who doesn't live here, it's quite secretive. You need to get somebody to make a phone call to make them aware that we are here. That's why it's very important um, uh, to get over the threshold. It gives the people that extra prompt, because nobody wants to hear that there's somebody, somebody in your property. Hello, my name is Russell McCracken. I'm High Court Enforcement. Um, I've been told to attend your premises with regards to an outstanding balance. We're here from the High Court to seize assets to that value, unless the debt is paid. I'm already in it. I'm already in it. Well, I'm already in your house, sir. So either make the payments. OK, if you do that, then I'll just have them arrested. OK, cheers. Do me a favour, and can you start doing an adventure list? Stuart and Ian have been told the house doesn't belong to the defendant but they can still seize household goods unless they have evidence that they belong to someone else. Ten minutes later, the defendant's girlfriend comes home from work. Right, first things first is my house. Yeah. And all mm -hmm. these belongings in here are mine. Right, OK. How can you prove that he owns nothing? How do you want me to prove it to you? Sale of receipts for the goods. For everything within my house? Yeah. No it's chance. A, it's a standard by the High Court. You've no chance. Right, we need to sort some sort of thing out with the cross to payment then. I don't want to say any more about the family month at the mini. It's not going to be enough. How much do you need? A it month? needs to be a minimum of 50% today. I, I, this, <laughs> a minimum of 50%? I can't. Yeah. Um... Either that's removal of goods. See what you can raise. Anything you can do, see what you can raise and we can take it from there. That's the best that we can do. <sighs> All right. Like I said, we'll wait in the hallway here. We won't go any further. Yeah. Her possessions are at risk of being seized. So she calls her boyfriend. Don't you dare. I don't need this. Stop it. He's on his way up. OK, no problem. He's not in a good mood. No, no. We'll deal with him. Yeah, no problem at all. Don't worry about it. Retaliate. No, no, don't worry. The defendant has already threatened violence. And Stuart and Ian have no idea what might happen next. <laughs> Events have also taken a troubling turn for enforcement agent Paul Bowhill. He's pursuing an ex-professional footballer who's nearly £3,000 in debt to his local dog kennels. I'll play ground off that Monday. If that changes, can you ring me? I won't change this one. But the deadline is today, and Paul hasn't heard from him. Well, I agreed with him he would meet me to make a payment of a grand. 
He hasn't made the phone call tonight, so he's failed at the first hurdle. Keen to figure out his next move, Paul's done his homework. The debt is because he left his dog in the kennels for a couple of months, and when he was asked to come and collect it, he made some issue over it, eventually collected the dog, paid with a cheque which bounced. And when the kennel owner tried to berate him about it, he just laughed in her face. So my impression of him is that he's a celebrity who's skinned. His next step would normally be to seize assets, but he's discovered that could be tricky. His 5 Series BMW on a 12 plate is on finance. His wife's 12 plate Fiat 500 is on, is on finance. So the whole thing protects him from direct attack. Hello, this is uh, Paul Bowhill. We met the other day. You were going to ring me tonight to make a payment. I'd rather re avoid a repeat performance of the other day, so can you please ring me, preferably in the next couple of hours, and suggest how you're going to make payments in this case? Thank you very much. He breaks his promise to me. That's my goodwill gone out through the window. We don't have to win on the day because we've got the law on our side, we've got endless patience, and if we have to, we will go away and come back better prepared. Back in Keithley, a local builder owes over two and a half thousand pounds. He's heard the enforcement team are in his house and has stormed home from his building site. Hey, come on, you can't. Oh, no. Move. Get out of my house. 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 No, that's no, OK, don't worry. You all right, mate? I don't know what you did, Your face was like, what was it? If they really thought that some insults were going to make us turn, go and forget about the debt, then they just they couldn't be any more wrong. You've got to calm the situation down, get back to negotiating the payment. After a few minutes, tempers cool off and negotiations begin. Okay, okay, no, sorry, don't worry about it. Because there's um, a pound that you can get access to now. Right. In his bank account. Right. And then I'll make an agreement to pay £100 a month out of my account. Right. To pay the debt off, will that suffice? Right, what I'll do is I'll... Uh... Really? No, don't worry, don't worry. No, 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 don't worry about it. Can I borrow your phone, Ian? It's clear the defendant's girlfriend is trying her best, but it's less than Stuart wanted, so he rings the office. He's basically moved in. Um, uh, he's got nothing, and he's brought a lot of debt to her door. That's, that's what the situation is. It's clearly what it is. Nothing in the house belongs to him. Oh, well, mate, you're all right. You're all right. As threatened, one of the men from the building site arrives. Just the lad turned up, obviously, because he's pressed the dis distress alarm himself, you know what I mean? Stuart now has a dilemma. The amount the defendant and his girlfriend can pay isn't enough. But if he and Ian seize goods, things could turn nasty. It's going to be a smash and grab, if you know what I mean, on this one. If I can get something like 500 quid today, mate, is that going to be acceptable? And then come on, an arrangement plan. Yeah, so I'll see what I can do. Hi, up, right. I've spoke to the office. Yeah. What they say is, if you can do 500 today and then 200 pounds a month, it'll be clear. If you're struggling, we can look can to it from there. From if, if it'll take the 300. It has to be 500 today. I haven't got it. I swear to God, I haven't got is it. Is anyone you can ring? No, we're 
The key part to doing your job well is learning about different tactics that people use to try and avoid paying the debt. I mean, you do hear plenty of excuses and plenty of reasons that people try and hide behind the debt. You need to be quite a strong person, and then you can get a good result on behalf of the claimants. He's got 300 and he's looking to give you the card details. Right. I can transfer 200 pounds him. Yeah, perfect. One second. Stewart's finally got the amount he wanted, but the atmosphere is still frosty. We've got an arrangement out of it all. Um, they can pay 500. To... Obviously, his macho pride's been hurt. You know, we've got into his uh, fiance's house. She's there uh, dealing with it. He's felt threatened. Signing print there. In a way, I did have a bit of sympathy for him, having worked in the building trade myself. He's obviously having a bit of a hard time. Right, so that's for uh, you to keep. It's not their fault for them, though. They're just doing their job. You know, the recession did hit me like a steam train. I went from having a really good job to no job, being unemployed on benefits. Take it easy. See you later. Yeah, I've got in debt to the point where I was working 12 hours a day, seven days on a week, with cracked ribs on a building site to pay it off. See you later. Right, right. Yeah, there was a bit of sympathy for him there. Oh, well, another day, another payment, Ian. The number of tenants being evicted from their homes has reached a record high. And with rents rising faster than wages, the most common reason for repossession is rent arrears. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill, Steve Pinner and Steve's son Ben are on their way to an eviction. They are in the South London borough of Southwark, which has the third highest rate of repossession in the UK. It's a nice house, that is. When we go to repossession, all we know is a couple of names on a piece of paper and the address to go to. Sometimes we're given a little bit of background, but we never know till we get to the door what to expect. As far as I know, there's no children living here at this address. It's just this lady who I believe is a dinner lady at a local school. She should be finished by now, then it's two o'clock. The tenant hasn't paid rent for several months, but they're not here to collect the debt. They are here to evict her. There's no answer, but the writ of possession still allows the team to break in and change the locks. This is the point where they come and open the door, isn't it? Yeah, usually. <laughs> what a locksmith. Now past the threshold, the enforcement agents have full possession. And for the tenant who lived there, it's no longer home. Hello? Hello? OK, let's go find a lock. There's the claim form, all the they're all aware of it. Most repossessions are enforced by county court bailiffs and take several weeks. But to get the tenant out sooner, the landlord applied to the High Court and the enforcement agents have come without warning. It's now time to drop the bombshell. Hello? Who's that? I'm a High Court enforcement officer. Are you near home? Sorry? Are you near home? No. Right, OK, because your property's being repossessed. What do you mean? You're being evicted today. So what does that mean? It means that you, you have nowhere to stay tonight. You are joking me. I'm afraid I'm not, madam. I've got money in doors and my credit cards and everything. Well, if you can come home now and get it, that'd be good. I don't believe that. She cut me off. I'm just thinking there's always a mystery in these places. She's working, and yet she stopped paying the rent. It's just odd. 
the woman's shocked, devastated, all of those things. But she must have known it was coming. All the eviction papers are there. The tenant soon arrives with her friends, and Paul presents her with the writ. How come when I was at court, I went to court yesterday, Lambeth Court, they told me that I had to wait for a letter stating when the bailiffs are turning up? Well, the landlord chose to take it to the High Court, which is instant. And they just and they don't give you any warning? None at all. None at all. I can't believe this. Right, the system is this. The house has been repossessed. If you need kit to last you two or three days, that's OK. You can then make an arrangement with us and we'll come back either this week or early next week when you've arranged somewhere to go and somewhere to store your stuff. Get your paperwork out. Oh. She's been told by the court, no need to worry, it's going to take us six weeks to get there. Wrong. And that's the bit that nobody's telling these people about. Don't be put off by people telling you, wait till the bailiff comes, because standing out there in the shadows are the super bailiffs, people who can react to an eviction order within 24 hours. Um, hold on, hold on. 12 years she's lived here, 12 years. She's gonna get to pieces, you know that. Until recently, the tenant has never missed a payment. Her next door neighbor arrives, and Paul hears another perspective on her situation. Can I just say, she's the best bloody tenant and neighbour he'll ever have in that sodding house. For whatever reason, she stopped paying the rent. Yeah, she stopped paying the rent basically because he was evicting her. We don't, we don't, we don't know. Yeah. All I can say is that's a sad loss to the neighbourhood and a travesty. Honestly, she shouldn't be treated like that. Terrible. There's obviously a story to this. As soon as the landlord started these repossession proceedings, she stopped paying the rent. So it's just a downward spiral. There's no escape. Stop paying the rent. Eviction's gone forward. OK, minister, what's he got in it? It's got a white envelope. It's got 50 quid in it. All your oh, things, yeah, your, yeah, court, pay, your court appearings. The tenant now needs to clear the entire house within the next 14 days. Touched by her predicament, Paul shows his softer side. We will come here and we will open the house. And it doesn't matter whether it takes you one hour or nine hours. We don't work weekends, but if the weekend is the only time you can come back, I personally will come and open up for you and sort it out. Pumps and all that, get things like that in your bag. Don't listen, don't, I mean, we're not harassing you now, just take your time. Wait to get to the... I'm only giving you my personal view, but the eviction situation is turning into an avalanche of evictions, and the poorer people are being squeezed out of central London into the suburbs or beyond. The tenant's home of 12 years is now off limits. The team's job here is done. But another of Paul's cases is far from over. An ex-footballer is in debt to his local dog kennels. Do you know I am, yeah? But yesterday, he missed the deadline for his first payment. And he's now given Paul his reason why. He phoned me <clears throat> to say that he'd phoned the kennels direct and he'd made an offer to pay them £250 a month. Bear in mind, this debt is nearly four grand. Yeah. And I said that wasn't acceptable. He had to make the payments through us. So we haven't had the last word on that one. All right. Paul's keen to investigate that the defendant is in contact with the kennels. And a few days later, he calls the owner. Hello. My name is Paul Bowhill. Uh, I work for High Court Solutions. I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. Yes. I spoke to him on Monday again, because he said he had an arrangement with you to pay. Absolutely not. Right. He has no arrangement with you. He has no arrangement. 
Well, and they, I've had terrible difficulties. I know you have. In the first place. OK. Um, and yeah, it's on television at the time. Yeah, I don't understand why he's making such a fuss over such a small amount of money. I just wanted to clear those points with you. Thank you for that. Take care. Bye. Bye. That lady there sounded absolutely genuine. Paul's heard a different version of events. He decides to escalate the situation. I've instructed the office to prepare a draft bankruptcy petition, and we'll just go that route with it. So the debt will now be about six grand. Once the bankruptcy petition is prepared, it adds fifteen hundred pounds to the costs. We put a line under it: pay all of this debt and the costs, or we'll bankrupt you. Okay. Onwards and upwards. personal debt is having a damaging effect on the UK's high streets. Research has found that small businesses are owed more than £55 billion in unpaid invoices. Today, Stuart and Ian are about to visit a small shop owner who's over £3,000 in debt. The High Court writ entitles the team to collect the money or seize goods to cover the amount owed. It's going to be one of those shops along here, isn't it? There, there it is. is. We're working from a blank canvas. So that's the exciting bit about the job to a certain extent, that um, you don't really know what's going to be at each individual address. You just don't know what you're going to. Hi, mate. All right. Reptile lover Peter Blake has owned his pet shop for over a decade. But for the last few months, he's failed to pay his reptile food supplier. He now needs to settle his debt, or Stuart and Ian could seize his animals, which could close him down. Just got an outstanding rip, mate. 3,136.28. Yeah, well, I can't pay it. Can't pay it? No, not anyway. We sent a form into the court to doing a payment amount, yep. uh, paying every month. Yeah. And we were just waiting on that being dealt with. That won't be dealt with now. No, I know. It's, well, clearly, because you're here. Yeah. Um, How much can you pay? Um, I could probably get about £400 by Monday. It's going to be more than it needs to be today, mate, or it's removal goods. Well, that's what I said. You're going to have to do that. Yeah. All right, OK. Well, what I'll do is I'll give you 30 minutes, see what you can do. If I, not, we'll be... Can well, do. like I said, I'll give you 30 minutes, all right? I'm see what you can do. You, no, no, I'm not being funny either. All I'm saying is, I'm going to give you 30 minutes, you must be able to ring somebody. I don't have any. Okay. Anybody. If not, we will be removing the goods. Looks like it could go to removal. He's very defeatist. I mean, straight away, he says, no point ringing. I've got no money, got no money. So uh, I've laughed it with him. I'm sure he'll be making a phone call in a minute, trying to raise some funds. So uh, we'll see what happens, and uh, we'll go from there. With the shop now closed, Ian starts an unusual inventory. Alligator. I honestly thought that you could only have stuff like this in a zoo. I'll tell you what, he's a lively one. I don't fancy moving this stuff myself, mate. The shop's most valuable assets are the exotic animals, but seizing them will be tricky, expensive and potentially dangerous. God, that's a big snake, isn't it? I know, yeah. So Stuart pushes hard for payment. We need a thousand today, mate, at least. I, I don't want to close your business, mate. I really don't. But I, I understand where you're yeah. coming from. I've just spoken to the only person I've got, and that's my mum, who will give me four hundred pound cash now. It needs to be more than that, mate. I've literally got nothing. I don't even have food money at home. Like I said, I'll leave, I'm a man of my word. I'll leave it with you. See what you can do. Peter Blake has gone from zero to four hundred pounds in ten minutes. Stuart's tactics seem to be working. The strategy that we've worked out is to give people that time to think, because everyone's first gut reaction once they've got to the high court stage is, I've got no money, I can't pay. And we are there to turn the heat up. It's a stressy thing running a small business, and the last 
five years have taken their toll with the recession. It's dead easy to go bankrupt, but the, the harder thing is to try and work through it and pay everybody. For a small business owner in dire straits, raising another £600 is a tall order. But with all eyes on him... Can you do a payment on this card of 250 Peter takes on the challenge. The 250 card was rejected, so I'm just trying to arrange it from other sources. Right. Is there any way you'd accept a cheque for the difference? I don't take cheques. Oh, no, I understand normally. I'm just trying to think of a solution. No, we don't, we don't take cheques. Oh, period. No. After an hour, money starts trickling in. Another £100 is delivered. There's 160 which my girlfriend's got, which mm -hmm. can let me have. Yeah. And I've got somebody else that's paying another so, 100 So that's 760 Yeah. Peter's had some success, but after an hour and a half, he's still £240 short of the £1,000 target. He seems to have exhausted all options. It's time for Stuart to report back to the office. He's scrapping the money around from everywhere. So there's different people ringing in, making payments. <sighs> 240, mate, yeah. <sighs> Patience is key to this job. If you start losing your patience, you start losing sight of the goal. Getting the claim and his money back, one way or another. It's been nearly two hours, but another friend comes to his aid. He's just ringing the office now to make the payment. Right, OK. 240. Where's that coming from? Somebody we know. The... Literally a friend. Right, OK. A friend, boyfriend, that's all. Ah, right, OK. Peter's raised the money, and Stuart's persistence has paid off. Ian, clear to go, mate. Clear to go. He agrees a payment plan with Peter to settle the rest of the debt. Just got one more scribble off you, mate, and then I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your Friday. Oh, yeah. I like that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's you all sorted, sir. All right. It's nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, you too, mate, and uh, hopefully we'll get this sorted. You right. take care. You nice too. to meet you, both. Thanks a lot. You nice too. to meet you. See you later. You. See you later. You, later. you take care. Very unusual day going somewhere like this, but... It's the job. You never know who, what, where, when, and what's going to happen. It's the magical mystery job. Over in South London, enforcement agent Paul Bowhill's dealing with his own mystery. He's been trying to meet the ex-footballer for three weeks, but without success. Yeah, phone switched off. If he doesn't pay up, there could be severe consequences. The entire world, as he knows it, is going to come crashing down around his ears. Enforcement agents Paul and Steve are back in South London to meet the dinner lady who was evicted from her home. Last night, she stayed with a relative nearby, but she now needs to register for a council home and has asked Paul and Steve for a special favour. She was a genuine case, and she needed documents to prove to the council that she existed. I hide things, and I don't know where I hide them. I don't know why. They're all in a safe place. Yeah. So we went back at no charge to recover the documents with her. Yeah, you need proof you... of ID for everything. How old are you? 53. You look older than that. Um... Oh, I like you for five minutes. <laughs> That's longer no, than most. All I'm thinking, you might come into their category for... Pension know. places. No, not yet. I've looked them up already. Got to be 60. But I've got to register and at least be in the system or something, and they want proof. Where is my driving licence? Listen, just focus. Pills! Medication, yes. And I don't think this is plugged in. The phone. What do you mean? Well, who's unplugged it? Well, not us. Her quick dash back turns into an hour-long salvage operation. Our approach to the way we do our job brings people to the fact that we are human. She like this all the time. No. We do have sympathy for them. 
you know, under the circumstances, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for them. When are you coming back with a van to move the stuff? Danny, it's my last knockings, five past the hour. Listen, still be here if you I? come here, don't talk, just pack, Wait. and then it'll be just so much quicker. <laughs> I've got some sellotape in the van. <laughs> You've been so nice. Yeah. You made me feel a little bit better. Oh, yeah, thank you. And we'll drink to you this evening. We're going to a do's. Oh, yeah, a bit of a do. Nice time. Oh, yeah. Pick up your commission. <laughs> Big check. I like you. Take care. <laughs> There's people out there that's worse off than me. <laughs> See you later. We do come across all walks of life. I think I would prefer to deal with middle or lower class so called people than the arrogant rich. It's now a month since Paul's first visit to Ashford to recover an ex-footballer's £3,000 debt to his local dog kennels. It's all brilliant, really, isn't it? I'll pay a grand off that one day. But the next week, the defendant missed his deadline. That's my goodwill gone out through the window. And claimed he'd paid the kennels directly. I'm not really paid money. No, no, I'm not, I'm not disbelieving you. But the kennel owner denied this. He said he had an arrangement with you to pay. Absolutely not. Paul's tried to contact him. Hello, this is Paul Bowhill. But after four weeks, he hasn't received any payment. Yep, phone switched off. Paul's patience has finally run out. He's heading back to Ashford one last time. No matter how brave a face he puts on it, being bankrupt, he's going to screw the next year of his life. Credit cards stopped, his bank accounts will be shut down, and so on and so on. The Leather Draft Bankruptcy Petition, which is a real sort of eye opener, this is what's going to happen in Canterbury Court if you don't settle this debt. Forget the offers, forget everything, pay up, or else. Simple. Job's done. <laughs>